After just about 30 years of ripping ass and taking names, Nintendo's dedicated handheld devices are almost certainly going to be phased out in 2018, at least as far as first party games are concerned, due to the Nintendo Switch being both a portable device as well as a home console. They took our job! I took our job! They took your job! <laughs> But even though the 3DS has been bleeding out ever since Metroid was released, 2018's still gonna have a handful of games worth taking a look at. And since I'm such a small guy, plus I have some community service hours to complete, I'm gonna take a look at the six most notable upcoming 3DS games and try to make an educated guess on whether or not they're worth the time and money. But before I do, why not consider tickling that subscribe button if you're a super badass who hasn't already? Anyway, let's begin! <laughs> While it seems obvious to stop making games for the 3DS in order to support the Switch if you're Nintendo, it's not a bad idea to release games for the 3DS if you're any other video game company. After all, the install base is much higher with 67 million 3DSs being out in the wild compared to the Nintendo Switch's 10 million at the time of this video. Not to mention it's cheaper and easier to make 3DS games as well. Besides, there's still PS Vita games not only being made, but localized for non-Japanese countries somehow. So we can count on the 3DS sticking around for longer than people think, albeit while taking a backseat to the Switch. And if you don't own or have never had a 3DS, then what are you waiting for, Turkey? There's gallons of amazing games for it, and in this one man's arrogant opinion, I think it might be the greatest gaming device of all time. At least in the top three, anyway. Plus, most of those amazing games are cheap as hell now, and the console itself is more affordable than ever. So with all that being said, you definitely can't consider the system dead just yet. And it's because of everything I just mentioned that I wouldn't be surprised to find out about some cool new games being announced for 2018 that we don't already know about. And even though the 3DS is on its way out the door, whether you want to admit it or not, it still needs love in its twilight years, much like one of my stupid ass dads. We don't know when either of them will die, so let's just enjoy them both while we still can. There's sure to be a few more games announced at some point, but for now, I'm gonna talk about the six that I'm aware of that look worth checking out. Starting with Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Redux. This game's an enhanced port of an original DS game from, like, 1994 or something. But this game's not just copy and pasted from the DS version. Along with updated graphics, there's plenty of new story content, additional endings, and a new dungeon to explore. I've never played the original game, and I'm still relatively new to the Shin Megami Tensei series in general. I've played Tokyo Mirage Sessions all the way through, and that's one of my favorite RPGs ever. And if you've played a lot of JRPGs, then maybe that's a random one to say is one of my favorites. But if you think that makes me lame, then off is the direction in which you can frig. I started playing the original Shin Megami Tensei illegally on my mod, and SNES Classic, and so far I'm loving it. I know Strange Journey's probably way different from the rest of the series, but from the gameplay I've seen, it looks like a heck of a mess of fun. It seems a lot like Devil Survivor, which is another Shin Megami Tensei game ported over from the DS that I've actually played. And if Strange Journey's comparable to that, then you can bet my goopy ass is gonna pick it up in January. And while we're on the subject of Atlas RPGs made in the 70s being ported over from the original Nintendo DS, let's talk about Radiant Astoria Perfect Chronology. Much like Strange Journey, it's not completely fair to call this a port seeing as how there's enhancements such as new voiceover, character art, animations, music, and balance changes with the time-traveling mechanics. Everything about this game looks like a lot of fun, especially if you haven't played the original. And if you own or are buying a 3DS and like JRPGs, then you might want to keep this on your radar. Cause I know I sure am. Next up though, Shovel Knight, King of Cards, which is the last campaign in the Treasure Trove saga where you play as some asshole trying to become a king or some shit. <laughs> Some may think this is less appealing as a 3DS game since it'll also be on the Switch as well as other consoles. But again, there's 67 million 3DS owners, so if you don't have a Switch, then this is definitely something to look forward to. I'm sure you already know what Shovel Knight is, but just in case you've been living in a barren wasteland from Dragon Ball Z, it's a retro platformer that does a better job at being one than most actual games from the genre that inspired it, so basically evolution at its finest. But rather than being sequels, the games from the Treasure Trove saga are basically spin-offs similar to New Super Luigi U, but better. Somehow Shovel Knight's been kept fresh even 47 years after its initial release, and if King of Cards is half as good as its predecessors, then it's definitely worth getting if you own a 3DS. Personally, I'm waiting for a physical copy, cause we know they're gonna make them after they sell a bunch of digital copies, since that seems to be the model these days. Physical copy tomfoolery aside, though, it's nice to see a Kickstarter pay off once in a while. In this case, it couldn't have happened to nicer boys and girls than the ones over at Yacht Club. Shovel Knight King of Cards comes out sometime early in 2018, but nobody knows for sure except my neighbor Terry. But that dastardly man said he'd only tell me if I had a drink of wine with him. However, even though he said he wouldn't tell my parents if I did, I think he's lying about this, just like the last four times he told me he had inside info and made me drink wine with him. Something about the wine Terry buys makes me fall asleep and always makes my butt hurt in the morning. Enough butt talk though, let's keep things rolling with Kirby Battle Royale. If you live in the UK and already have this game, then shut your butt because North America doesn't get it till 2018. But I do feel bad that the one time you guys actually get a game before us, it's something that just looks so average. Oh well, at least you guys got Yoshi's Woolly World first. Back to Battle Royale, 
well. The gameplay kind of reminds me of Legend of the Mystical Ninja, except it doesn't look as cool. And I hear the multiplayer is pretty cool, plus there's a ton of different variety with 11 different game modes. But with all the other good games in the world right now that I don't even have the time to play, not to mention the Switch is getting what looks like it's going to be a better Kirby game, I can't in good conscience lie and pretend that I'm going to go out of my way to play this game. If you're looking forward to Kirby's Battle Royale, though, then feel free to beat me up in a one-sided fight for being an ass river and enjoy the game. Because who knows, I could be wrong and this game could turn out to be awesome. But I've never been wrong once about anything in my life before, which actually is kind of weird now that I think about it. I must be pretty cool, huh? No. Ah well, something that is probably going to be pretty cool though is the upcoming JRPG called Alliance Alive. Developed by, of course, Atlas. From what I've gathered in my countless hours of extensive research, Alliance Alive is somewhat of a spiritual successor to The Legend of Legacy as far as gameplay goes, and was even made by the same people. I've always loved turn-based RPGs, and although I don't know much about this one, you can start the game with different characters who all have their own stories, which is pretty badass. This game's at the top of my list of 3DS games I need to make sure to play in 2018, more so than anything else in this video. Since it wasn't on the original DS and won't be on any other console in the near future, it looks like it's going to be the best true 3DS exclusive all year. It just seems like a lot of heart went into it from people genuinely wanting to make the best game they can, but try as it might, I doubt it'll be able to top what's probably going to be the most anticipated 3DS game in 2018, Dragon Quest XI. This is also coming out for the PS4 and even the Nintendo Switch in the future, and even though the 3DS still has decent graphical capabilities in 2018, it won't compare to the PS4 version. However, in probably the coolest way to compensate for graphics that I've ever seen, 3DS owners can play the game in 3D that still looks great, but there's still the option of playing in retro 2D graphics so 3DS owners won't feel like they're getting the shit version. This is actually really ambitious and a great way to think outside the box. I typically don't care for retro graphics in modern games since I think it's overdone and lazy more often than not, with a few obvious exceptions. But 8-bit graphics in Dragon Quest XI can't even be considered lazy since it's optional. It's a true bonus, and even if you turn the 2D off, the game still looks great otherwise. Besides the graphics, the game speaks for itself since it's Dragon Quest, but to give you an idea of how good the Dragon Quest series is, every time a new game comes out, the manga for Hunter x Hunter goes on hiatus so Yoshihiro Togashi can play it. I mean, the guy also has back pain and is probably just lazy, but for anybody who's played a Dragon Quest game before, you can't really blame the guy. Even if you own a PS4 though, there's enough exclusive features in the 3DS version that make it worth considering. So unless Dragon Quest XI comes out on the Switch in North America at the same time as the 3DS, the handheld exclusive's the one I'll be getting. But there you have it. I feel confident that there's still gonna be a handful of new games that we don't know about, seeing as how the Game Boy Color hung on for as long as it did. And there's probably gonna be some more virtual console releases after Pokemon Crystal. But other than that, it looks like the 3DS, as well as Nintendo's legendary line of exclusive handheld devices, are about to ride off into the sunset. Unless, of course, Nintendo makes a cheaper portable only switch which i'm not exactly against as long as it has a clamshell design i mean it's a less crazy idea than the 2ds anyway what games are you most excited for was there anything i missed is there anything in specific you're hoping comes out let me know in the comment section below and as always i'll pin whatever i find most entertaining don't forget to like and share this video if you want to help this channel keep growing and if you want a personal date with one of my grandma's cute friends then go ahead and press the subscribe button if you haven't already my name's Cameron, and this video is dedicated to my fifth dad who couldn't survive until the end of the video. Rest in poop, Pep Pep. So I want to say thank you to your loyalty. Thank you for your support.